Breaking news! Mercury is getting smaller. Well, we used to think that our planet was the only one in the solar system that had tectonic activities, meaning that the planet releases heat because plates under the crust move, which changes the surface and eventually makes the planet smaller. But it happens on Mercury, too. Researchers took pictures of the planet back in 2016. These pictures showed landforms that were reminiscent of cliffs. They're called fault scarps. Since they are relatively small, the team believes they were formed not very long ago, which means Mercury is still contracting, even 4.5 billion years after the solar system formed. Mercury has a solid inner core, and there's a liquid metal outer core that surrounds it. It's still going through a cooling process. In fact, all rocky planets are still cooling from the times when they were initially formed. As those liquid parts of the planet's core become more solid, the planet contracts and becomes smaller. How come you don't see planets twinkling like stars? If you were up in space, you wouldn't see stars twinkling. But on Earth, you see it because of the atmosphere. Our protective blanket of air refracts the light of stars, which means it scatters it in a zigzag pattern. We perceive this as the twinkle. Planets appear way bigger than just pinpoints. Their light also zigs and zags after hitting the Earth's atmosphere, but these motions kinda cancel each other out, which is why we see their steady light. Now, if you brought a block of lead on Venus, it would melt like a block of ice on our home planet. The surface temperature on Venus goes up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Even when researchers send spacecraft up there, it can't withstand the environment for too long. One craft, for instance, landed there in 1982 and managed to stay for only two hours. But a team still got the first color pictures of Venus and analyzed some of the planet's soil. Planets collide with asteroids, comets, other planets, and the rest of the celestial bodies that move through space. But galaxies also collide. Milky Way, our galaxy, is about 2.5 million light years away from Andromeda, our closest galaxy neighbor. They are getting closer and speeding toward each other at 250,000 miles per hour. It's inevitable. One day they'll collide and everything will change. Two galaxies will merge into one brand new, unique one. And some planets and stars won't survive. But according to predictions, this won't happen for another 4 billion years. Plenty of time to, well, do most anything. The combination of the gravity on our planet and the gravitational force of the moon leads to changes in ocean tides. So when you jump, you're pulled back to the land because of the invisible force that pulls things toward each other called fill in the blank. Gravity, good for you. The moon has about 80 times smaller mass than the Earth, but it still has a gravitational pull. As our planet rotates, the moon's gravitational pull influences the closest part of the Earth. It affects the whole planet, not just the water. But the land is denser than the water, which is why we see the effects of the moon's gravity on the water only. And the results are the tides. On the opposite side of our planet, the one that's farthest from the moon and where the moon's gravity is the weakest, the tide is high because the moon pulls the rest of the Earth towards itself, away from us. What do you think space smells like? Well, you can't actually smell it because your nose doesn't work in a vacuum. But astronauts that work aboard the ISS have said they've noticed a specific metallic aroma on the surface of their spacesuits after repressurizing the airlock. They compared it to the odor of welding fumes. Other things in space have a specific smell, too. For instance, there's a lot of hydrogen sulfide in the atmosphere of Uranus, which smells like rotten eggs. Venus and Mars have a similar odor. The atmosphere on Mercury is quite sparse, which means it doesn't have much of a smell. On Jupiter, it depends where you are in the atmosphere. Some parts have high levels of ammonia, so you'd smell something like cleaning fluid. Other parts have an egg-like smell, but the rest, the parts with high levels of hydrogen cyanide, smells like bitter almonds. And you don't want to take a big whiff of that, trust me. Here on our planet, when you try to fuse two metal bits together, you have to apply enough heat that the metal gets to its melting point. It's way simpler up in space. You don't need heat or any action at all to stick two pieces of metal together forever. It's something we know as cold welding. It happens when the metal bits slide over each other. They have protective oxide layers. On the Earth, that's something that stops them from fusing. 
But in space, this type of protection is gone. So the electrons from one metal piece simply flow into the other one, and they become one. There are rocks from space all over the Earth. In 1996, a geologist found a rock in the Sahara Desert. After studying its composition, scientists realized they hadn't seen anything like it before, even on other planets or with other meteorites. One theory says this stone was even older than our solar system. It had a specific combination of elements that was probably characteristic of early solar nebula. Pluto was demoted from a planet to a dwarf planet, partially because of another dwarf planet called Eris. Eris was found in 2005. It has a similar size as Pluto, so astronomers were worried that the number of space bodies that orbit the Sun and that are waiting to be discovered might have been compromised when it comes to being an official planet. So after they discovered Eris, they set up new standards for a celestial body to be called a planet. Round, orbit the Sun, and orbit clear of small objects are just some of the criteria for a celestial body to be considered as a planet. And you have to score well on the SAT. There are more than 20,000 pieces of space junk, junk that humans created, circling around our planet. And these are just the pieces that are larger than a softball, while the real number of total pieces our researchers track is way bigger, somewhere around 500,000. There are millions of bits so small we can't even track them. In space, junk can move at high speeds, sometimes more than 17,500 miles per hour. That means even small objects, like a chip of paint, can damage an operational spacecraft. So the International Space Station has to carefully maneuver itself to avoid space junk. And there's another potential problem there. It's called Kessler syndrome. When there's so much junk in low orbit of our planet, it smashes together, which leads to more and more debris, like some sort of space domino effect. One of the potential ways to solve this is by using nets that would push the objects into our atmosphere, and then we could clean up at least some of the space junk. Neptune has a pretty interesting moon called Triton. It kind of reminds us of Pluto because of its similar composition, but it's also in retrograde orbit. Triton is probably one of the icy objects in the Kuiper Belt. Neptune's gravity probably trapped it at some point and turned it into its own moon because Triton has been orbiting Neptune ever since, and it's been doing it in the opposite direction that Neptune is rotating. One of Triton's coolest features is its erupting geysers. There's water on two of Saturn's moons. The first one, Enceladus, has a whole ocean made up of salt water. And based on some complex organic molecules, there could even be a sign there's some form of life. But this is just a theory that no one can yet confirm. Titan, the other moon, could also have signs of life. Any place in space that has both carbon-containing chemicals and water is a potential home for some form of living organism. What's the coldest planet in our solar system? Your first thought is probably Neptune, since it's the farthest planet from the Sun. But it's actually Uranus. It's 20 times further away from the Sun than we are. The average temperature at its cloud tops, and that's what we call the surface temperature in gas giants since they don't have a solid surface, is minus 315 degrees Fahrenheit. Enough to give you a bad case of freezer burn. Planets that are so far away from our sun can't get much heat, which is why some heat comes from their core, similar to how the core of our planet is hotter than the surface. But it's not enough, so both Neptune and Uranus are cold. But Neptune has methane in its atmosphere. On Earth, methane is a greenhouse gas, which means it traps heat like a thick jacket that keeps you warm. And Uranus has less methane in its atmosphere, which is why it's a bit colder than Neptune, even though Neptune is farther. Speaking of Uranus, did you know a season there lasts for one pretty long day? Yup, that one day is equal to 42 years. The planet makes a single circle on its axis in 17 hours. But its tilt is so pronounced that one or the other pole is mostly directed towards the Sun. This means that a day on the planet's North Pole lasts 42 Earth years, which is half of a Uranian year. So if you could go to Uranus and stand on its North Pole, you'd see the sunrise in the sky. You'd circle around for the entire summer, after which you'd face 42 years of darkness and winter.
Uh, no thanks. I'll stay here. <laughs>